Hi, I'm Chip, and in this video, I will teach you everything you need to know about why your washer might have an out-of-balance condition. I made a similar video about three years ago on the same subject, and you can click on that link in the upper right corner of your screen and watch that. And I'll uh, list in the description. I'll list it in the description too. Now, since then, several developments have occurred, so I thought it was time to revisit this topic. Now, let's start with the older models. When washing machines that spin the load dry were first invented, manufacturers had to figure out how to balance a load of clothes, which was always random because your laundry always settles to the bottom of the spin basket. Heavier items could end up on the on one side, causing problems when the basket spun at high speeds uh, to extract water from the fabric. Now, the earliest models that used a spin cycle often had to be fastened to the floor to prevent them from walking during the spin cycle. And you can imagine how frustrating that was for uh, consumers. A man named Jim Kirby, the same man who invented the Kirby vacuum cleaner, is credited with inventing the first washing machine with a spin cycle. In 1916, the Laundryette Company was founded by Arthur Betts. And it was based on Kirby's designs. The Laundryette was the first commercially successful washing machine with a spin extractor cycle. Now, unfortunately, the company declined to make continual improvements suggested by Kirby, and competition forced him out of business by 1926. But the concept of the spin cycle caught on, and now every washing machine today has one. Now, let's take a look at how Maytag uh, dealt with this balance problem. If you check out the schematic of this older Maytag machine, uh, before Whirlpool acquired them on April 1st, 2006, and yeah, that's April Fool's Day, uh, You'll see that the tub rides on a pedestal held down to the frame by six sturdy springs. The whole setup rests on a cone-shaped piece of metal that matches a similar uh, shape in the bottom uh, frame plate. Now these two pieces of metal are separated by three damper pads, which prevent them from directly touching. And these pads uh, allow the pedestal to glide smoothly over the bottom support. This design is also found in some Admiral and Whirlpool machines. Now, if the damper pads wear out, you get a metal-to-metal -metal contact, causing friction and uh, preventing the tub from moving freely, uh, leading to an out-of-balance condition. And to replace these, I usually place a 4x4x6 four by four by block under the main pulley beneath the machine, and that raises the pedestal enough to swap out the pads uh, when you uh, rest the machine's weight on this block. And due to their age, I don't see uh, many of these machines around anymore. And, I'm kind of glad because that was really a hard job to do. The next, uh, let's move on to Whirlpool's direct drive machines, which were hugely popular and are still with us today. This design spans several brands uh, owned and licensed by Whirlpool, including Amanda and many of the Kenmore units. Uh, and by the way, if you can, you can tell if Whirlpool made a Kenmore if the uh, model number starts with the 110. Other brands like Estate, Admiral, and KitchenAid are all Whirlpool brands they also use the same internal design these machines typically develop an out-of-balance condition for two reasons first the stabilizer spring breaks or the hole it fits in on the frame runs through and, and the spring pops off and second if the snubber pads wear out uh, causing a metal to metal contact uh, there and you can see where the snubber pads are located here and I'll link to a video of me changing them above you will find Whirlpool suspensions on many of the brands owned by Whirlpool, including a Mana Estate and Roper. And there are a lot of Kenmore's out there. The Kenmore is a Sears brand. Sears never made the first uh, appliance. They always sourced uh, their appliances out to Whirlpool and some other companies, but mainly Whirlpool did most of Sears work under the Kenmore brand. Now these machines use a suspension system consisting of a base with snubber pads and a triangular skate plate that moves uh, freely between the tub support and the center post of the base. Uh, this system is held together with a series of heavy suspension springs. If any of these components wear out, such as the snubber pads or the springs, it can lead to an out-of-balance condition, causing the machine to shake or vibrate excessively during the spin cycle. If you have a machine built on this platform and it's out of balance, it's almost always due to a broken stabilizer spring found at the back left corner of the tub. This spring connects the tub 
bracket to the bottom of the uh, back frame. And you can usually diagnose this by lifting the lid, noticing if the tub is off center, and leaning toward the front right corner of the unit. If this isn't the case, then one or more of the snubber pads between the skate plate and uh, the base are likely worn out, creating a metal-to-metal -metal condition that prevents the plate from uh, gliding smoothly over the base. Now let's talk about uh, more modern machines and their suspension rods. Now suspension rods are simply four steel rods at each corner of the, of the washer cabinet. They use suspension springs and dampers that fit into cups at the washer cabinet top corners and bottom edges of the tubs. This, the system combines springs and dampers to help reduce vibrations and keep the machine stable during operation. Spin balancing is a complex problem and Countering the forces that change with every load of laundry has been a task that engineers are still tweaking. One of the neatest innovations was the balance ring that is on the top of all top load uh, washing machine baskets. And they're uh, attached to the edge of the spin baskets. And now these uh, plastic rings are partially filled with salt water because it's denser than fresh water. And internal baffles in these rings allow the water to move around the ring freely to counteract the forces of an unbalanced load. This is why you can hear water sloshing when you think you've completely drained the machine. Early balance rings were also filled with sand, though I don't know of any modern machines that use the sand anymore. I once saw a YouTube video where the guy drilled holes in the bottom of his balance ring to drain the water out, thinking that it had gotten in there somehow during a wash cycle. He tried to convince users to do this to fix their unbalanced problem. But yeah, don't do this. It's, a, it's supposed to have water in it. So let's dig into the science of why your washer becomes unbalanced. To understand this, you need to understand stability and all the aspects of it. Now first, neutral dynamic stability is a condition that usually occurs during the agitation cycle where the suspension springs are gently compressed and decompressed without causing excessive bouncing. Positive dynamic stability happens when the suspension rods are working properly during the spin cycle. As an unbalanced load causes the springs to compress, the dampers uh, gradually return them to the normal extended position, and it reduces the bouncing. Now, the washer returns to a neutral dynamic stability as the water spins out of the clothes and becomes more stable. However, if the linear dampers wear out and can't control the bouncing of the springs during the spin cycle, you get a negative dynamic stability. As the springs compress, the bouncing worsens and uh, causes the tub to shake violently. Right. Left unchecked, this will quickly damage your washing machine's components. So let's see how Whirlpool addresses this problem on their newer machines. And here I have a typical Whirlpool suspension rod that I've disassembled. It consists of a steel rod which can be uh, various lengths and thicknesses depending on the model. A hook fits into this slotted suspender at the top of the rod, and which rests in a cup at the top corner of the washer uh, cabinet. This cup has a plastic liner that allows the suspender to move smoothly. And you'll find a metal washer at the bottom of the rod that holds everything into place. Above the washer is a spring retainer which supports the heavy duty spring. Above the spring there's another retainer but this one is special. It contains what's called a linear damper. The linear damper in, in the Whirlpool machine is a stiff cylindrical piece of dense foam that fits tightly around the steel rod. Its purpose is to suppress the movement of the spring when it returns to the extended position after being uh, compressed. And this friction acts act kind of like a shock absorber to reduce bouncing. This particular rod is an OEM or original equipment manufactured part. The linear damper in this OEM version is about twice as long as some of the cheaper aftermarket knockoffs that you might find online and it will last much longer than the, those cheaper ones. If you're going to replace your suspension rods it's wise to opt for the OEM parts because the others will not last very long at all. Now, this rod sits in a ball socket either molded into the bottom of the washer's outer tub or fitted to an, to an insert that snaps into the tub support. To replace it, you'll need to remove the rod from the bottom of the machine. However, some models have slots in both the cabinet sockets and the tub sockets, allowing you to replace the rods without accessing them from underneath. Here are examples of rods that you'll find in Samsung and LG branded machines. 
you can see here that the rod is of a higher gauge or diameter than the Whirlpool variety. And it's worth noting that these brands use a lot of sticky damping grease to soften the motion of the up and down, as well as the side to side movement of the rods in their sockets. If you've ever changed these rods, you know how sticky and difficult it is to wash this stuff off once you get it on your tools or hands. And now we come to the masters of suspension rod makers, GE. Now GE got it right when they made their rods. Their rods are made from good quality, high gauge steel, and they approach the damping, uh, dampening problem differently. Now, if you look at this plastic cylinder that covers the heavy duty spring, it's very thick and robust and has two functions that I can determine. First, it is closed at one end. And when this piston compresses the ring, the air inside is compressed and dampens the movement. Also, this combed ring that fits inside the piston applies outward pressure against the cylinder, which increases the friction and dampens the movement even more. Now, considering damping grease used to lubricate these parts, you'll have a very efficient and durable system that rarely breaks down. I haven't seen many suspension rod failures on GE machines. They usually last the washer's lifetime. Now, suspension rods are usually the main culprit for unbalanced uh, modern washers, but there's also a few other factors to consider. Now, let's take, for example, a Samsung active water jet machine. And this large uh, tub hub that connects the uh, spin basket to the transmission shaft is made from an alloy that's mainly a sacrificial metal and will corrode over time and can break or the splines can wear to the point that the top of the tub will lean over just a few degrees enough uh, to cause an oscillation that overpowers the damping power of the rods. Also, a large left-hand threaded nut secures the spin basket to the transmission shaft, and this can loosen or even crack, allowing this condition to happen. I will mention here that when changing the rods on any of these Samsung machines, ensure you are ordering the correct rods for your model machine. Depending on your model, there are, they are very similar in appearance and size, but they have very different dampening properties. Also, many of the older GE machines have an alloy hub prone to cracking, which will cause the tub to lean over and oscillate. The same thing can occur with Whirlpool brands. Uh, these machines tend to rust near the bottom of the a tub post and will crack underneath the agitator. It won't be obvious that this has happened by just looking inside unless you push down in various uh, areas around the top of the spin basket to see if there's an unusual movement. One particular make of the Whirlpool brand also sold under the Maytag name is particularly troublesome regarding balance issues. These machines can quickly be identified because the large cycle selector knob is positioned right in the center of the console. Now Whirlpool recently addressed one thing that would have otherwise sent these machines to the scrapyard. These machines came from the factory with a plastic tub hub that would strip out when the steel splines on the transmission shaft started to rust and corrode. Now, a better solution would have been to use a stainless steel shaft to survive the caustic uh, wash water environment, but they didn't do that. So they re-engineered the part and have come up with this solution that replaces the plastic hub and squeezes the new metal splines of the tub hub against the corroded drive shaft. That fixes the hub issue, but not the out of balance issue. Now this was a technician's nightmare. And until new appliance parts came up with their basket bushing, it was an almost impossible repair. I sent many of these machines to the scrapyard disappointed because they were in very good shape, except for this uh, previously unfixable balance problem. So what happens to these machines is they have a splined plastic hub insert in the bottom of the spin basket and it wears into the shape of an hourglass and will lean the top of the basket over just enough to cause a, a negative dynamic stability situation that the linear dampers and the suspension rods cannot overcome and the washer becomes severely out of balance. To fix this, you must pull the spin basket out. Drive out the damaged splines bushing and install one of new appliances uh, replacement bushings. Once you reinstall the basket, you change the plastic tub hub with a whirlpool replacement, install new uh, suspension rods, then these machines will perform like they're brand new. There is another condition that was considered unfixable in the past that I've recently invented a tool to solve for this problem. And so far I have a prototype that I have filed the patent papers on, but 
uh, I will probably just draw it up in Fusion 360 and offer it on Maker World or Thingiverse so that you can 3D print one of your own. So anyway, this condition occurs when you overload your machine with a large comforter or pillows or anything that causes enough centrifugal force to bend your spin basket. Now, if this occurs, no amount of suspension rod changes are going to fix the condition. In fact, you may change the rods, but after a few uses, the machine is out of balance again due to the severe wear on the linear dampers. If you'd like to see how this tool can straighten a tub, you can watch this video right up here. Or you can use a scissor jack and a board to straighten your spin basket. And you'll need to watch the video to see how to place your jack. So if you're unsure whether your machine suspension is the pedestal type or the rod type, you need to press down on the agitator post to see if it moves down. If it's solid and it won't move, it's on a pedestal. Movement up and down means it's hung from rods. Now to test, if the rods are bad, you can push down sharply on the agitator or the wash plate and let go and the tub will bounce. Good rods will move downward, but they'll return to position without bouncing. Now there are a ton of YouTube videos out there that show you uh, different gimmicks and hacks to uh, fix your out of balance washers, but that's just what they are, they're gimmicks. Don't waste your time trying to re-engineer what the manufacturer has made. Do the repair correctly the first time and you'll save yourself time and the possibility of further damaging your machine. Be sure to use OEM parts for all your repairs. I'll put links uh, in the description for, uh, for some of the parts I mentioned here, but always use the model number when ordering parts or uh, replacement parts for your machine. Amazon is full of aftermarket suspension rods that are inferior to OEM parts, and I'd stay away from them unless they specify OEM in the product description. Try buying from an online appliance parts dealer like Repair Clinic or Appliance Parts Pros, and they usually sell only OEM parts. I hope this video was useful to you. I appreciate you subscribing and leaving your comments. And But that's all for now. Give me a thumbs up and check it out.